Telecommunication, uh, I knew as soon as we'd written it that it was going to be a, I don't know whether it was going to be a big hit or not, I didn't know, but I just knew it was like going to be like a theme because it was so bouncy and all that. And um, I mean, it's, one of the silly things is it was we were just messing around doing it one way and it was sounding okay and then we just reversed the, the riff and it suddenly like took on its whole new life. We actually wrote that song in about, I don't know, 20 minutes. Something about two minutes. It was our first instrumental, and the, the chords in a certain break, which we couldn't remember, were DNA. You know, the chord D, the chord A, and we thought, what can we call this instrumental? You know, nothing came. We thought DNA, you know, that sort of biological matter, that black gooey stuff. Do 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 do. No, that was catchy. That was uh, everybody really likes that one when they hear it, and of course we we won the Grammy Award for that. Uh, do you know what DNA stands for? Because I don't. <laughs> When we were naming the song I ran, there was a little company called Zoo Records in Liverpool. And then we went running in there one day as we ran. And we just went up and there was this picture on the wall, this like cellophane picture of people with this big tower and a spaceship. And we thought, wow, that's great, that isn't it? Who is it? And he said, oh, it's so and so's new poster, you know. We went, are you going to use it? And he said, I don't know. And the next day we went in and he said, we can have that, I'm not going to use it. Well, oh, great, great idea for the song, you know, I ran so far away. Once it hit the American charts, nobody wanted to look back. So we just stayed. And Iran just became a big hit for us. Space Age Love Song, because I thought of the title. Uh, what was happening was we wrote this song and Mick had the lyrics and everything for it. And we just didn't have a title, because actually in the lyrics there's no mention of Space Age Love Song, you know, there's no chorus like that. And we were just sitting around and I said, well, to me it sounds like a Space Age Love Song. And I said, yeah, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> and so he kept it. So I was dead pleased about that, because I'd, I'd only just joined the band. And they let me actually title one of the songs. The more you run, the more you hide. Ali's actually short for Alistair. Uh, I was named after a Scottish vet that my mother uh, <laughs> rather liked at the time. <laughs> I watched Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde, and it was like really interesting and intense. So I videoed it and watched it, I don't know, two or three times in one night. And I don't know which version of it it was, whether it was an old one or a newer version, but the doctor in it, he kind of said, you know, you can run from this, but you can't hide. And it just stuck with me, and it's about this guy who can't run away from his emotions. They're always with him wherever he runs, they're there. And, I, you know, it just stuck, you know, you can run, but you can't hide. I wouldn't spend my life just wishing Uh, one and only so far British hit <laughs> if you like you know if you count chart success as a hit um, it was good we enjoyed doing Wishing and uh, I, think, I think that's one of our better songs uh, it's one people respond to when we play live because they all know it you know and I don't know whether it was the American success that helped it or just the fact that it was the best song we'd ever written um, I just kind of jumped up the charts went into the top ten and there we were here with a hit in England as well the song Nightmares, it had like a sort of open atmospheric feel to it and it was created by everything doing nothing, you know, everything was playing simple things, the bass was just hitting harmonics with a vibrato pedal and the drums was just giving like a, a really backward off beat, you know, and the guitar was just giving a harmonics and there was no riff there, there was nothing going on and it just had a haunting feel to it and it was like, to, to the ears and play it you know, when we first wrote it, we thought, this is really amazing, like, things you can explore, you know, like having dreams and nightmares, and you can sing about it. And then it gets deeper and deeper, you know, and you think, we're pulling this out of us ourselves here, and it's, it's coming from somewhere, like, no one knows, like a phenomenon, you know. No one knows nothing about where it comes from. The seagull sound, the, the two main things that are always up in the mix is, like, the guitar and the synths. And uh, what we set out to do from the start was to actually try and marry the two. I think working with the drum machine again made the Traveller, gave it a different feel. I mean, it was when we were first learning to do that kind of thing. And drum machines and things like that, it's fairly easy to 
you know, get a disco rhythm going and just play along with it. Travel as a song, we were doing a lot of travelling. Uh, that first time when we started to do gigs and it was only a pub circuit and it was just seemed like a time to write a song about travelling, you know, and it just probably... That's my idea, you know, that, that's the way I see it. I taking ideas and like dead abstract things, like trying to de trying to describe what a church door would sound like in music, you know, just like just anything to get like a, a different idea, and it didn't work at all. Like you know, just sound like a load of nonsense. Sounds for affection, all I can say about it. Beautiful song, like I really love it. And it fits into the space age, Iran feel of things. Transfer affection, I think the third single off the album, of the second album, we toured Europe. It was our first real European tour. Uh, and we did that before we went to the States. It's not me talking. Well, it's about a guy who keeps hearing voices in his head, and uh, it's not until later on when he, you know, he, he runs outside, kind of thing, that he sees that he's being contacted from outer space, and. Uh, he mentally can't really handle it, so he just runs around going, it's not me, it's them. You know, it's a kind of weird little concept. But um, it was the first single we ever did. And when we did it with Bill Nelson, we got really friendly with him, and he always wanted to really have a good go at doing it. And it, he thought it'd be great to do a video too. So when we came to doing the second album, we decided that we'd remix it, in fact, re totally re-record it. And um, it'd be something for people that liked us to have an original, you know, like from so long back, three years back, and then have, like, see how we could do it now. And then maybe in three years' time we'll do it again and see how we, we can do it then. And uh, we wanted Bill to do it because he gave us the break to do it in the first place. And, uh, I mean, it's a real powerful song and it, it needed a really good video. So we, we spent our worldly fortunes on the video. The more you look, the more you love. It's hard for me to really describe like what what um, what the song's about because Mike writes the lyrics, and like, I've heard him describe in interviews what his feelings are about the song, and I don't think my interview that greatly from his. It's just that if I get it wrong, I don't want Mick to kick me head in, like type of thing. The lyrics are, are kind of personal. Um, a lot of them. You know, you can use fill-in lines where you can use a line that does mean something and then the next one can be a throwaway line, just as long as it fits within the sort of context of the song. The dance is like a, a new move for us, like, I mean, a lot of the new album is a new move. And it's because not only have we changed our image or what we want to sing about, but we're becoming, like, more mature as people. So it's not as difficult to write about emotions. And as we sort of learn to live with each other more, we're moving more into that sphere, you know, becoming more emotional about what we say, um, thinking more about people and flying saucers. You've just got to realise that, you know, the songs that you've written can be a basis for the next ones. So you've got to kind of concentrate more and you've got to kind of shut out all the things that can deviate you from your path, like, you know, like, little things that you may, like, oh, I've got 500 quid, I'm going to go off on holiday for three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you know, it takes your mind away from your work. And I think, like Frank says, you know, women, uh, drinking, drugs, they can all take you away from what your actual goal is, and they all slow you down and break you up. So you've got to be sort of very single-minded, you know, and just keep going straight up. I mean, things like reviews, bad reviews and stuff like that, you know, if you actually take them to heart, they could, you know, really hurt you. But you've just got to say, well, I, I think it's good, I don't care what that guy thinks, you know, and I'm going to carry on like this. You just keep your ambition high, raise your sights, you know, and just go from one thing to the next, just progressing all the time.